All right, guys, I'm all set up for my trial run. Um, basically, I switched out those um, those metal um, serving pans that you can get at like a catering or a restaurant food company, and I have just this big aluminum one, and I concentrated the heat cables right underneath it. This is my air stone that I've got, and uh, it's going to be atomizing the air and or atomizing the water and boosting the humidity. I'll eventually have an acrylic uh, top be made that's going to go across this uh, this little liner. But um, the next stage is I've got my thermostat, so I'm going to have it running, and I'll show you how I set it up. So with my large um, aluminum pan back in place and uh, most of the heat rope, concentrated under that. I'm going to fill that with water. And as you can see, the black hose is coming in here, and that's from, again, the airline. And that's going to oxygenate and atomize the water and uh, create a higher humidity environment. This is a wet incubator setup. Um, if you wanted a dry incubator setup like my, um, my cooler unit, uh, you would want to cover all the water sources. And, uh, the, since water has a high specific heat, it will hold the uh, the uh, temperature mass constant. And so I've got the egg crate, as you can see, just sitting on those old butter containers, and it's the exact height as. As this uh, metal, hopefully it doesn't oxidize too much. But as I said, those are going to be my real, real egg chambers. And as I replace them, you can see I can fit quite a few eggs in here. All right, here's my basically running incubator. Um, I've got this lower fan. I put this top grate on. And that lower fan is flowing up, and this uh, this fan on the left underneath this crate is uh, blowing down. So that will give me good air circulation. And then um, on top of here, I'm actually going to put my egg chambers, which are going to be six and a half quart tubs. And then inside those, I'll have um, the actually where the eggs will be going, which will be deli cups. Um, so I've set this up, and I'm going to run it overnight with just the, just the uh, hood on it and see what kind of temperatures it gives me, and we'll go from there. All right, I fed a, uh, the thermostat probe through the little drainage hole and also a thermometer. Um, I've got that thermometer in between just the two egg boxes. And then I'm actually going to put the thermostat. You're going to want to put those directly on the eggs, uh, especially for chondro eggs, um, because the fluctuations inside this egg chamber is going to be a lot less drastic um, when you open the open the uh, whole unit um, to check on your eggs. It's going to be a lot less drastic inside the egg containers rather than um, inside the whole incubator. So if you have it um, changing temperature as you open the container, um, actually usually your water um, gives you a high specific heat and will hold the thermal mass and increases the thermal mass of the, of the area. So it will bounce that temperature back up um, to the correct temperature rather quickly and you don't need all the added heat that's going to come in um, if you put the thermostat um, outside the, the actual egg box itself. So that's just a little tidbit of information that I picked up. And I'm going to run this just like it is. I've got a little bit of water in there, so it's going to get a little humid in this box. Um, and I'm going to run it at like 87 degrees and see how it goes. All right, here's my jumbled mess. Actually, I plugged everything into my Helix uh, thermostat that I've got um, just because I don't have an extra uh, power strip right <laughs> this second that I can find. And plus, the fans don't require much. Um, they only require 12 volts. So as long as 
it is running some sort of power, it's going to be circulating air. And also the, uh, the air pump as well is plugged into there. And as long as it's, like I said, running some sort of power, it, it's going to be powerful enough to run this, this little air pump that I've got back here. Um, but I've got this bottom one is uh, the air pump. This middle one is for the heat cable heat tape or yeah heat cable and uh, this is running my fans and then I've got this set to 87 it's at 62 right now and then take that off and open this bad boy up got my egg chamber got my circulating air I've got open water I've got bubbling water so hopefully I'm going to test this setup for a little bit, make sure everything's good on it, and hopefully it will be set up for the, by the time um, I get a couple of clutches of Condors. But I hope this helps you guys out, and I have changed the uh, design a couple times, so, and you kind of just have to work with what you have and be a little creative and just try to get um, the dynamic that you really need. You just you need the proper levels of humidity, the proper temperatures at the proper time, and you need to be able to regulate that. So um, it's just kind of a little, when you're making your own incubators, it's kind of a little uh, guess and check work. So as long as you put in that time and effort, um, you should be able to come out with something decent, and hopefully they'll, they'll hatch out whatever you're trying to hatch out. After a little bit of testing, um, I was getting a hot spot over here and a cool spot over here because I had um, one fan going up and that was raising the heat. And then the middle here, it was keeping pretty steady, but I want it to be uh, perfect all the way across. So I, um, since I have two big of fans, um, I have one that's going to be blowing this way and going back to the original design and the other one that's going to be going that way. And I cut it through the egg crate, and it actually fits so perfectly that it just is wedged in there right now. But I'll probably zip tie it down. Um, but now I'm going to put the uh, the pan in, see if it fits, and uh, we should be good to go. All right, I've got the water pan back in. Um, as you can see, there's always a lot of guesswork and check work when you're making your own incubators. Um, but I have actually had to move one of the fans over to even get this pan to fit. Um, but I have the fans on either side, and they're blowing, uh, you know, parallel to each other. And hopefully that will give me a more even temperature overall. And this pan is filled with water obviously and I'm going to put the next levels on. I use these just to raise it up and then I'm going to, I've got my air stone I'm placing there. I've got an air line going to, for the air stone. Usually for an air stone this size, you need um, a pump that you get at like a hydroponic store or a real aquarium store. So I'm going to connect that up and then I'll put the top back on and put my thermostat probe back in and I'm running four thermometers on it right now just trying to see what kind of temperatures I get. But that will basically be my setup. Uh, hold on one second, and I'll show you how this is. All right, we've got bubbles coming out of the air stone. That's hooked up to the air pump over there. Then I've got my fans also hooked up over here. Air pump fans um, all plugged in over here. I've got one thermometer over here, but in each one of these tubs that go in the top, I've got thermometers hanging down from those, and I'm going to check the temperature gradient across the whole thing with my new setup, and hopefully I will get a little bit more stable temperatures. 
As you can see, I've got um, four six quart um, ripoff Sterilite tubs, actually six and a half quart. Um, but I have egg crate in each of the bottom of, I'm trying to simulate what it would be with the eggs. Egg crate, and then I've got water floating in the bottom of there. So that will create humidity in here. And then this is absolutely dry, and this is where the eggs will actually go. Um, this is a wet setup, so they don't need to be in anything wet. Uh, the humidity in this chamber should be enough um, to get the uh, chondro eggs to and, uh, and to be good for them. So right there I've got a thermometer probe throwing in the thermostat probe, which will be on the eggs themselves. And then cover goes back on. And that's basically how I've got mine set up for the moment. And uh, we're going to check on the temperatures. And I'd only had a difference of a half a degree or um, some, uh, sometimes up to a 0.7 degree difference with the fans the other way that I had them. So I'm thinking with this that I will have uniform uh, heat distribution across all four. Um, and I have thermometers in three of them, and I'm also need to check them against the uh, thermostat itself. I switched out the thermostat to one that reads in, um, in tenths of a degree, whereas the helix that I had only read in, uh, I could only set it to 87 or 88 degrees. This one I can do in tenths of a degree, which is made by Spider Robotics um, as the herbstat. Uh, it doesn't have a night drop. I've got one with a night drop, but I don't obviously need that with an incubator setup. So, um, but there you go. There's my incubator. I'm going to make a top for it because this top was already had a bunch of condensation on it. So I'm going to make an acrylic top so that uh, the heat doesn't escape every time I open it. But I'm going to run a few more tests and make sure everything's set up nicely. And that's about it. So this goes down as such. And then these are my test thermometers. They're all they all read in Celsius. I need to get a mercury lab grade thermometer so that I can run and make sure that all of these are somewhat accurate. But I, I figure if I run enough of them and check them against each other, then I will get some sort of precision out of it. Anyway, they're all reading 24.3. That one's a little hotter. Um, but, yeah. That's basically how I've got it set up.